hey, 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 can you all hear me? Can you hear me? Can you feel me? Can you hear me? Good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right. Hey, so in a minute, I'm going to do a live talk here on the FMA in the A320. All right. And what it is that it's trying to tell us. So look forward to doing it with that, uh, with that here with you guys here shortly. What's going on, Joe Munoz? We're here live on the stream. We haven't done a live stream in a, in a little bit, and I'm actually here just doing a video on the uh, A320 FMA, okay? What it says, what it's trying to tell you on takeoff. And we're gonna do a takeoff here together in a moment using the desktop trainer behind me, and I'm gonna explain to you exactly what it is that the FMA is trying to tell us, all right? Because we got a lot of stuff that we say on takeoff. So with that said, appreciate you all joining me here. Let's get this sim going. If you got any questions, leave them in comments. I'll do my very best to address them. Let's get into it, all right? The 320, it's very wordy, okay? Those of you transitioning from a, from a different type of aircraft, particularly maybe from a turboprop, on the first takeoff, we're about to do one here, you're gonna see Manflex, SRS, Runway, Auto Thrust Blue, all this stuff. So I just wanna share what all that is with you and exactly break it down, all right? So let's take a look at this here. I think the first thing we need to do maybe is... Um, let's be sure the parking brake is off. All right, here we go. All right, let's check it out. So we advance our thrust, usually to about 1.05% EPR, or 50% N1, depending upon engine model. Okay, freeze, freeze right there. Let's take a look at this FMA. It says Manflex 56 SRS Runway Auto Thrust Blue. <laughs> What? What does all that mean, okay? This is what I wanna to explain to you. You'd be surprised, ladies and gents, how much, uh, you know, all that information that's being presented there and frankly, the lack of total understanding of what exactly the aircraft is trying to tell us in the FMA, the flight motor enunciator up there. So I wanna break it down for you very simply by column of FMA, what exactly it's saying so that you can make sense of it. Now, with that, I got my handy dandy whiteboard here. Let me pull this out into the picture. Okay, I'm going to block the screens here for just a second. Hopefully you can see this. And now what I want to do is I want to share with you what Manflex SRS Runway Auto Thrust Blue actually means. Okay, so down here, let's see if we can get our FMA here. Okay, five columns, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so we got the Auto Thrust column. We've got the Pitch column, the Roll column, the Auto Land column capabilities over here and then we have the auto flight status this is the five column FMA of the A320 okay now when we look at what exactly just popped up on the FMA behind us over here it said man flex man flex specifically it said plus 56 that's the flex temperature so man flex 56 and the pitch column it said SRS Runway in the roll column and in the auto flight status, we had auto thrust in blue. Let's break down each one of these. The first thing is we're going to go left to right. Man flex. It starts for, man, it, it, it basically stands for manual thrust. The auto thrust has an active range of just above idle up to and including the climb detent. Okay, the climb detent. In other words, if I'm two engines, 
two engines, my active range of the auto thrust system is from just above idle up to and including the climb detent. Above that, we have the flex MCT detent. And then beyond that over here, of course, we have toga. Now, the single engine active range for the auto thrust system is from just above idle up to and including flex MCT. Now, remember, we just took off right now with two engines, or we're in the process of taking off with two engines, which means we've brought the thrust levers up to the flex MCT position right here, which is beyond the auto thrust active range. So the, the auto thrust right now is not active. The auto thrust is armed, but because it's not inside of the active range, it is not yet able or have a it doesn't have any authority or jurisdiction over being able to control our thrust for us at the moment. So for that reason, the FMA reads manual thrust because the auto thrust has no authority right now because we're not in the active range. It's controlling manual thrust. And we're in the flex detent with a flex temperature of 56. Flex, for those of you that don't know, it basically means a reduced thrust takeoff. Oftentimes in jets, we don't use full power like in a GA airplane, a 172 or 152 or something. We don't go full power and take off. We have a reduced thrust takeoff because per perhaps the load is a little bit light, uh, ambient conditions are favorable, and we don't need all the takeoff thrust. So in the interest of engine wear, we don't do a full power takeoff. So we're, do we're in manual thrust right now because we're outside of the active range of two engines and we're using a flex temperature of 56 degrees. All this is programmed, by the way, in the MCDU. It goes a little bit beyond the scope of this video. Now let's, look, let's now look at SRS, okay? <clears throat> Hopefully this is making sense. By the way, if it's not, drop it in comments. Love to hear your feedback and see what it is that you're getting hung up on. SRS, okay, it stands for Speed Reference System. SRS stands for Speed Reference System. You're gonna see SRS appear two times. Once is on takeoff, and the second time is on go around. On takeoff, SRS is gonna pitch for V2 to V2 plus 10. On the go around, it's gonna pitch for V app to V app plus 10. Now, basically, all that means is the flight director bar will provide nose up guidance, pitch attitude guidance. That's why we see it in the pitch column of the FMA. It's gonna apply nose up pitch guidance and pitch us to one of these two options, depending upon if we're takeoff and go around. The truth is that both of these equate to roughly a positive 15 degrees nose up, okay? Basically a positive 15 degrees nose up is where the flight director for the most part is gonna be close to and then it'll adjust accordingly to maintain either V2 to V2 plus 10 or V app to V app plus 10. All right, so now in the roll column, we have runway in green. The only time you're going to see that is if the departing runway uh, that you're taking off from has a localizer signal. If it has a localizer signal, you're going to see runway populate in the roll column of the FMA. You're also going to see what we like to affectionately refer to as the Washington Monument. That is not the formal term or the official term, but we just call it that because it kind of looks like it. You can see over here on the attitude indicator, we have this little green indicator. This is your center line, okay? That is the indication given to us by the uh, automation that this is the center line of the runway that we're departing and we're only going to see that if we happen to have a localizer uh, installed on that runway. And finally, we have in the far right column over here, auto thrust in blue. Auto thrust in blue. Why is it in blue? Because if it's blue, it's armed not active, right? White would be active, blue is armed. Now because it's, it's armed right now in blue, why would it be armed? Well, because we're not in the active range and we're not going to be in the active range until we reduce the thrust at the thrust reduction altitude to the climb detent. And when we reduce the thrust to the climb detent back here, then you're gonna see auto thrust go white because we have now restored this into the active range for the auto thrust system. So again, just to recap some of this, uh, Manflex SRS Runway Auto Thrust Blue, you don't, man, there's so many pilots that they'll say all this stuff, but what does it really mean, right? And the, if you understand the why behind the what, the retention goes through the roof. So remember, manual thrust with flex temperature because it's a reduced takeoff. Manual thrust because we're outside of the active range of the auto thrust system. SRS stands for speed, speed, reference 
Okay, this is my chicken scratch here on the board. Speed reference system. Speed reference system. On takeoff and on go around, you're gonna see it. Remember, for you to trigger it on go around, I need to hit toga and have at least flaps one or greater. All right, let me put it this way. Make it more simple. Flaps one plus, okay? If I have flaps one or greater and I select toga, I'm gonna get to the go around phase. I'll trigger SRS. I'll get the nose up guidance, all right? And on takeoff, we get V2 to V2 plus 10. On the go around, it pitches for V app to V app plus 10. Basically, that's roughly 15 degrees nose up. It'll adjust accordingly then as needed in order to trend back towards the, the two, one of the two speeds here. And finally, we get auto thrust in blue in column number five. Now, let's continue the takeoff roll because what we're gonna see here is when the auto thrust goes active, which is gonna be at the thrust reduction altitude. And I know where the thrust reduction altitude is simply because if I open up my McDo, I can see here we're in the takeoff phase. Let me just increase the size of this so you can get a better look at it, those of you watching live. Appreciate you, drop your comments or your questions if any. Devanch, what's up? I see you there. Azka, love your lesson man zoned in. Appreciate it, appreciate you all. Thanks for tuning in. By the way, we got our biggest deal of the year going on right now, onestepprep.com forward slash deal. Up to 50% off on some of our stuff on the website, type ratings, everything is really at a, at a great price right now. Go take advantage while you can. Okay, check it out. Here's the McDo. Here is the MCDU, stands for Multi-Control Display Unit. You'll see the thrust reduction altitude here is 1510. Basically, standard Airbus is 1500 feet above airport elevation. So if I'm above airport elevation, 1500 feet, standard, that's where I'm gonna see thrust reduction. And acceleration altitude, usually they're coincident, but not always, you could have a noise abatement procedure or something like that. But here is where I'm gonna expect for the FMA column number one, the auto thrust column, to say, lever climb. It's going to prompt lever climb at which point we'll reduce the thrust, okay, to, to comply with that. So let's just do that so you can see it and then we're going to watch the FMA change happen and then I'll describe kind of what's going on and why that's happening there. Uh, let's see. Let me close this window. All right, there we go. Now, let's change the view. Let's go back to my two-dimensional cockpit. There we go. Obviously, I got the attitude indicator here uh, and, and big so you can see it. All right, we're rolling down the runway. 80 knots, the thrust should be set. 100 knots, check. Here comes V1, rotation. Nice three degree per second, as we always hear. There's positive rate, gear up. All right, 100 feet minimum for autopilot engagement. I'm gonna put the autopilot on. We're naving 35 feet off the end of the runway. We get the autopilot, uh, or I'm sorry, we get the nav mode to start. Now here's what I wanna show you, check it out. Here we go. Altitude, 1510. I'm expecting to see lever climb. Here we go, here we go. Okay, pause. We got climb mode over here. We are now out of SRS. Why are we out of SRS? Because we have reached the acceleration altitude. The acceleration altitude is also in the MCDU right next to the thrust reduction altitude. So you saw thrust reduction slash acceleration. When we get to the acceleration, we go into climb mode right now. Okay, that's the mode we're in. At this point now, we see lever climb. Let me unfreeze it, flashing over there, which is basically prompting the pilot flying to reduce the thrust. So let's reduce it to the climb detent. Okay. Bear with me, I'm working with a little side stick here. There we go, all right. Now we see thrust, climb, climb, auto thrust in white, right? Thrust, climb, climb, auto thrust. So, let's break this down. What does this mean now? Back to the whiteboard. Okay, thrust, climb, it no longer says man flex, right? Thrust, climb, you don't need to complicate this. It means the thrust is set at climb thrust. This is what we refer to as a fixed thrust setting. The thrust is fixed at climb thrust. It's not gonna move from there. What also changed is auto thrust over here is no longer in blue. Auto thrust is now in white. 
The reason it's in white is because we took the thrust levers, which were at the flex position, outside of the active range for two engines. We brought it back to the climb position, and now the auto thrust system is active. Not arm, it's active because the thrust levers are inside of the active range of the auto thrust system. Jurisdiction over the, the ability to vary your thrust as needed to maintain a. Alright, so that is basically why now auto thrust went to um, white. The auto thrust system spent a lot of time talking about not just the active ranges but also alpha floor and how it'll command toga power for you. We can even look at methods for disconnecting of the auto thrust proper versus improper methods, where it gets its guidance from FMGC 1 or 2. There's actually two auto thrust systems but despite the one button on the FCU. I mean, we could really go on and talk about it. One thing too, if I bring the thrust levers back, Prior to the climb detent over here, right, it's going to say thrust limited. It'll throw an ECAM, auto flight thrust limited, right? And that's because the auto thrust system ideally wants for the thrust lever to be at the climb detent so it can maximize how much thrust it'll give you or have the authority to be able to give you, right? Think of your thrust lever as more of a thrust limiter. You understand what I'm saying? Levers are kind of like thrust limiters, and to the degree that you have the thrust lever not in the climb detent, if it's prior to the climb detent, you are limiting the total thrust available up to that point because the auto thrust system ideally wants full active range, but if you bring it prior to the climb detent, which you shouldn't, you would be limiting how much thrust it's, you're giving it the authority or the ability to be able to, uh, to command for you, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. Now in the FMA, what we see here is um, we have a fixed thrust setting, uh, thrust climb. We're in climb mode, which means the uh, aircraft is going to uh, pitch to maintain the speed, magenta 250 over there, which is typical below 10,000 feet. And because it says climb and not open climb, it's, not go it's going to comply with all constraints. If there happen to be any altitude constraints, it would be complying with them in climb mode. Not true for open climb. Nav is that we're tracking the green uh, line, what some of you may know as the magenta line, if you're transitioning from Boeing or a different type of product uh, aircraft. And then in the auto flight uh, status on column number five, kind of cut off there in between TVs, we see autopilot one, one FD2, that tells me both flight directors are on, both FMGC computers are functional, auto thrust in white, which means it's active. Wow, that's a lot to cover in the time that we spent here so far. Um, we talk all about this. I can't even begin to share with you how much we go through in our videos online, which, by the way, we have a great deal going on right now for Black Friday. OneStepPrep.com forward slash deal up to 50% off. Let me get caught up with some of the stuff you guys are typing in here. Uh, back to basics, listening at work. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> appreciate your content. I appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Adrian just finished his A320 type rating in the Philippines. Your videos really help. Let's go. Adrian just finished his type. Love it. Uh, simple takeoffs. Love your videos and enthusiasm, Joe. Glad I caught the live stream. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here. Please make a video on FLS approach on the A320. Fair enough. Uh, Vinay, appreciate you. Such a good instructor. Man, love you. Love you guys. Thank, thank you so much. Uh, alpha floor thrust is equal to toga power. It is. It's toga power basically is what happens. Auto thrust system needs to be available. Doesn't need to be armed or active, just needs to be available. And if the aircraft suspects you're going to enter into a low energy state, it will command uh, TOGA power to prevent a low energy state. All right. What else we got? All right. Relatively short, but to the point video here. You guys are going to see this go up on YouTube. Uh, obviously, we're on YouTube now, but I guess what I should say is you'll see the replay of this because I'm recording it live as we're doing it. So you'll see this pop back up. Um, as always, drop your comments, like, share, and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Um, and also take a look at the deals that we have going on. We right now, um, usually once a year, we have uh, an offer that is that as, as low as we go pretty much. Black Friday, Thanksgiving time, uh, end, of the, uh, end of the year right now, moving into the holidays is typically when we do this. So OneStepPrep.com forward slash deal. That's where you're going to find everything there up to 50% off on some of the products. Um, so uh, anyways, I uh, hope you guys take advantage of that. I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Simple takeoffs. Is there a set time at which you activate the approach in the McDo, or is it all dependent on the situation? Okay, great question. Um, <clears throat> the answer is it depends on your company. Usually we activate the approach at most airlines descending through 10,000 feet. It's important to understand what activating the approach phase actually does, and that'll give you better um, 
a better answer as to when you're going to want to activate it. The reason there is an approach phase to be activated is because the managed speed is going to follow the flap handle. So if the flaps are in zero, it'll fly green dot, one, it'll fly S speed, two, F speed, three, F speed, and full V app. Green dot is usually somewhere around 200 to 210 knots. It depends upon the weight and ambient conditions, but usually it's about 210 knots. How far away from the uh, arrival airport do you want to slow to 210 knots? Uh, the aircraft's descent planning typically has a slowing down somewhere between 20 to 30 miles away is where you're going to find what is referred to as the deceleration point. The decel point or the deceleration point is where the automation would automatically uh, activate your approach phase and begin slowing the aircraft to green dot. Um, if you're okay with that, let the automation roll. If you're in a high density traffic airport where maybe they want you to keep your speed up, uh, that's why a lot of carriers, at least particularly in the U.S. here, we at 10,000 feet manually activate the approach phase, but we select the speed to maintain 250 and keep our speed up on the arrival. Uh, so the answer basically to you simple takeoffs is it depends. Um, the deceleration point is automatically calculated by the automation. Usually it'll activate it 20 to 30 miles away. If you let it do that, that's fine. Uh, or you can manually activate it depending upon the scenario. Uh, let's see, Rahul, I'll learn this stuff again from you in person someday soon. Keep up the good work. Appreciate you, Rahul. Yes, you will, man. Come, come and visit us, please. A um, lot of expansion going on for us here. We are in Miami, as you well know. We have two offices right now, both in the same building. The first floor is our administrative office. That's where you're going to find our record keeping department. You will also find our sales, marketing, scheduling. Um, Alexis is here sending out emails to you all, answering your questions. Diego. Director of Sales, Monica's and Records, you'll find myself, Juan, all of our instructors. That's all first floor. Come by and ha hang out with us here. Fourth floor, we have our training space. We're up to four classrooms right now. Uh, they accommodate anywhere from four pilots up to 16. So we very much look forward to working with you here in person. Type ratings, okay, those of you that are looking to convert maybe a foreign license to an FAA ATP. Uh, we have a whole program for you, particularly if you're flying the 7.3 or soon to come the 324 is here. We can do a short reduced course for you so you can get your ATP license and also a type rating on that new ATP license. Uh, maybe you want to do a circling restriction removal. Maybe you just got hired by an airline. There's plenty of people right now that are getting hired by Spirit, JetBlue, Delta, United, American, Atlas, UPS. I mean, they're really getting hired everywhere the industry is going just crazy. It's a great time to be a pilot. That being said, when you go to training, I'm just going to share with you right now in full transparency, it's going to be a lot. And the airline might give you a butter knife to cut down the tree when what you really need is a chainsaw. That's the analogy I like to use. So here what we'd like to do is equip you with a chainsaw, give you everything and all the tools needed to get you through this program successfully. So um, check out our online programs as always. Send us a message via the Contact Us page at our website. We'll put together some kind of footprint, some kind of training plan for you. And as of recent, I've been working with pilots from all these carriers that I just mentioned that are going into new hire programs or recurrent programs. Last thing I'm going to leave you with is interview prep. Um, everyone is interviewing as well, right? It is worth the energy, the time, the effort, the investment, both in time and monetary and other resource investment to assure two things. Not only one, that you get the job, so invest in yourself in interview prep. A lot of people ask me, what is it going to cost, right? It's 500 bucks for a two hour interview prep with video. The better question is not what does it cost? The better question is what does it cost not to do it? Not what does it cost to do it, what does it cost not to do it? And the cost of not doing it could be a multi-million dollar career. Just like the cost of not preparing ahead of time could be a multi-million dollar career. Because anytime you get an offer from one of these places, you get what's referred to as a CJO, a conditional job offer. And your job offer is conditional upon you passing training. And if you don't pass training, there goes the job and there goes the multi-million dollar potential career that you could have had at that company. So invest in you early. Uh, it's the best investment you can make in yourself. I'm more of a, uh, of a student than an instructor. I know most times people see me here teaching and stuff. The fact of the matter is when I turn the camera off, I basically go back to being a student more so than teaching anything. So I would encourage you all to do the same. And I think being a student is one of the traits of the highly effective instructors. All right. Appreciate you all tuning in with me here. Check out the video here soon. You guys know the name. Juan and Joe, your friends and training program success at onestepprep.com. We'll see you in another video shortly and another live stream. All right, we're going to try to do these more often, so we'll see you in the future ones.